How's it going, Yankees fans? This is NYNews.com. Mike Paz, where everyday ordinary Yankees fans get a platform to showcase their opinions. Submit your takes in MP3 audio to NYInsider at gmail.com. What's going on, Yankee fans? This is Alex reporting from NYY News. Felix was kind enough to give me the mic for this, uh, this rant, so thank you, Felix. And uh, I'm going to go and... Uh, just say what I think the Yankees should do. That's not about what they will do, for sure. If this video or this recording came out a couple weeks ago, Boone wouldn't be there. Aaron Hicks would not be even in the discussion. But here we are. I make suggestions. They make decisions. So with that being said, I'd like to point out a few things that the Yankees may do that they probably should do. And uh, let's just go around the diamond real quick. Let's start about Gary Sanchez. Let's be honest. We haven't played him in a do-or-die game two years in a row. How many times are we going to keep playing this? He's due to make at least $8 million this year. It's one more year before he hits free agency. He needs to go. What more do we want to say? He can't really hit. He just He's got tons of talent, but he can't really hit. No pitchers like to throw to him. What more do you want? I'm okay with the stopgap right now. Um, Jan Gomes is a free agent. We got a couple guys down on the farm that could potentially be that replacement. Not quite ready just yet. Um, one thing to maybe look out for, I don't think it'll happen, but uh, Mike Zanino does have a club option with the Rays. If for any reason the Rays decline that option, five minutes later the Yankees should have a contract ready and waiting for him. But... Right now, Sanchez is the guy under contract. He needs to go. If we had to get somebody, anyone to replace him, it's fine with me. The guy can't catch. You can't, pitchers aren't even relying on throwing breaking balls to him. He's affecting the entire pitching staff, even to the point where our ace has to have a personal catcher, which is another issue entirely. So then let's move it on to first base. You know, Anthony Rizzo, I liked him personally. I like his leadership. I like what he brings to the table, but he's not coming back. He's just not. DJ LeMahieu is probably going to be our starting first baseman this year. We've given him that long contract for a reason. I don't see him playing that utility type of role that he originally signed with the Yankees for back in 2019. But he's our first baseman. If we need somebody for just a glove who's going to be contact, we already have him on the roster. Second base, we got Glaber. I can't I can't wrap my head around letting Glaber Torres go or trading him right now because his value is so substantially so so low right now. And we know what kind of talent he's got. He's still young. Um, looking at his build, I'm not that confident in his uh, his ability to be very successful in the future. I do think him moving to second base is going to be a tremendous help. If he stays at second base, leave him at second base and let him try and work out the problems he's had. But right now his trade value is so low to where why you might as well just keep him. And hopefully he brings it back. I really hope he becomes the all-star that we've seen in the past. Shortstop, that's the fun one. We know Cashman's already said he wants to he's gonna be looking for a shortstop. Now, let's just get this out of the way first. Everyone's saying Corey Seager. If those rumors are true that Corey Seager for $300 million, we can stop talking about Corey Seager right now. If we're going to spend that money, whether you like it or not, Carlos Correa would be that guy. Me personally, I don't want to see Correa come to New York. Not anything to do with the scandal. Not anything to do about the 2017 cheating. We all know about that, but... As Yankee fans, if he came into New York and he hit a couple big bombs, we'd all get over it. I personally don't want Correa because of a couple reasons. One, he is going to cost a fortune. If you haven't noticed, these Yankees are not the George Steinbrenner Yankees. These are the Hal Steinbrenner Yankees where they are very concerned about finances. It seems like even to their detriment at some times. But... Correa, who's 27 years old, 
if he's going to get 300 million, which he very well likely will, you're going to have to give him a lot of years. You're talking about a middle infielder who's great now, but father time comes for everybody. And he hasn't had too much injury history, but he does have a history of some back issues, which is really concerning for a long-term middle infielder. Again, he's a great player. Don't really like his attitude too much, but he is a great player. It is what it is, but I wouldn't sign him for that reason alone. Now, the other side of the coin is we have our top two prospects that are shortstops, one of which that we know of is Anthony Volpe, who the Yankees are not trading for anybody. He is a future stud. Now, what may happen is he might become the future third baseman, and then number two prospect, Oswaldo Peraza, will be the long-term shortstop. I do believe that Peraza is probably better suited long-term as a shortstop, and Volpe, with his amount of talent, will still be a great third baseman, as well as offensive juggernaut. With that being said, we do need the shortstop. They've been, they've been talking about it for a while now. They don't seem to be too inclined on Trevor's story. I think the move being that you have these two up-and-coming shortstops is Marcus Simeon. The guy hits the ball. The guy, obviously, he can move to another position when these two shortstops are ready and are playing in the field at the major league level. Simeon's the guy. And the biggest thing is he's not going to cost that much. Probably get away with three to five years, maybe $150 million. But you're not going to be locked into a very long contract with a guy like Marcus Seaman, who is going to be able to do a lot of things the Yankees have not been able to do this past year. So moving on, still have Rochelle. I'm sure there will be some offers made on him. Um, he's not our problem. Let's be honest. He's really not. But... I'm sure they'll be fielding some offers, and I know I missed it, but Voight will probably be have some offers fielded his way as well. But um, the biggest one was, let's talk about the outfield. Aaron Hicks, for some reason or another, is going to be back again. I mean, who, how many games are you going to play? 40, 60 maybe? I mean, how many times you got to keep replay, replaying this over and over again? We know what he is. He's always hurt. But he's here. That's what they're going to go with. And, you know, that's my biggest knock on this Yankee front office. They don't never, they never seem to know when to admit when they're wrong. I mean, Hicks is a very good player when he plays, but he never plays. So it's not about if, but when, when we need to get a new center fielder. Judge is obviously the cornerstone. Give him a contract. Now, Left field, we did trade for Joey Gallo. We have Stanton, who proved that he can play the field. And if you haven't noticed, he plays, he hits better when he's in the rhythm of playing in the field. However, my inclination is to have Judge and Stanton both play right field as well as DH partially to keep them healthy. When it comes to left field, I honestly don't hate Joey Gallo as much as a lot of people do. He does provide some value that the Yankees didn't really have. Gold glove defense. He does walk. Obviously strikes out a ton. But the biggest knock on him is that he thinks too much. It's been reported that he thinks too much, and that's just not going to fly in New York. It doesn't work. And I, I don't get me wrong, I like Joey Gallo as a person. I hope he has a great career. I just don't think he's right for this team. I do, however, think that there is a left fielder who is perfect for what the Yankees need, and no one's talking about him. So in my choice of a roster, Gallo's traded, get some more prospects in. We don't have to look too far. Go to Yankee Stadium South. And go to the Orioles and make a deal for Cedric Mullins. We've seen him for a few years now. But has anyone really seen what he did last year? He batted 291, stole 30 bases, hit 30 homers, 
He's probably going to win the Silver Slugger Award. And he's 27 years old. And this is the Orioles. You don't have to trade that much for him. It won't be, you want to give up Dominguez. You wouldn't have to give up Volpe or Peraza. You might have to package a couple prospects, but this is a guy that the Yankees need. He's versatile. He was their center fielder. So when Aaron Hicks goes down, you have your backup, you have your center fielder ready and waiting. But as of right now, I'd have him be playing in left field. Left field in Yankee Stadium has always been known as you need a second center fielder. He fits the bill perfectly. And let's not forget, he's also a left-handed bat. The last point I would like to make on is the rotation. Pitching actually was very good this year. And I know a lot of people want Robbie Ray. And I like Robbie Ray. My only thing is that he he's probably winning the Cy Young this year. And with that being said... He had a career year, good for him, but I do believe someone is going to overpay for him. And when someone's overpaying for a pitcher who never had a year like this in the past, who's had injury history, might not be the best long-term investment. If it's me, I'm putting my money towards Carlos Rodon, who is a top-flight pitcher, younger than Robbie Ray, and I believe has more upside. Beyond that, though, this is Alex from NYY News, and I'll talk to you soon.